today I'm going to be demonstrating this beta oil painting and telling you the story of how I met Simply Beta here on YouTube and ended up with this beta fish. If you are not interested in story time, you can skip ahead to this point in the video, right where the painting starts. So about six months ago, I decided back in January, I really, really wanted a planted beta tank. I grow plants, uh, mainly orchids and adeniums. I've got lots of different plants, but those are my main two. And I thought a planted beta tank was a perfect excuse to get more plants, but plants I've never grown before, stuff that grows in water. So I started researching, I started going to different shops, looking at, at tank sizes and such. And I've never had fresh water before. I've only kept salt water previously. So that's what I know. And I ended up going with another salt water tank just because it's what I'm comfortable with. I know that sounds backwards. Most people would start with the beta tank and then go with a saltwater tank. But for me, I ended up deciding, you know what, let's just go, I, I will go with coral instead of plants and my clownfish. But even though I had them and I love them, I still really wanted that beta tank. So I started researching, I was watching the, a lot of videos on YouTube, I ended up coming across a channel called Simply Beta. And when I went to Aquashella, which was at the end of March, she was one of the YouTubers who was there. I was super excited. Now, she had no idea who I was, so she has some crazy girl running up to her with a camera saying, hey, will you come record this video with me and give me some tips on keeping a beta? And she was so sweet, agreed to do it. I was super excited. She probably thought she had a crazy stalker. It was great all around. So we are over here at Aquashella and we've got yes. these little tanks here. Could be a starter tank, I'm hoping, for a beta. These are probably like three or four gallons. And it's a great starter tank for, for a beta, absolutely, even a planted tank. Like, these look really nice. They're rimless, they're, they're really high clarity. They're gonna be perfect. So, and they also come with a little filter, which is very gentle and probably just perfect for a beta fish. Well, I think that this looks good. So we are probably gonna pick up one of those. Oh, and, and also the light. They come with the light. Oh, even Ooh, better. Nice. Perfect. It's nice. It's a good deal. Yes, we now have to go shop for betas, so <laughs> let's go. All right. I'd recommend getting a fish here. Like, these are all really nice, just imported beautiful, beautiful beta fish from reputable sellers. And I definitely recommend going this route, maybe, versus going to, like, a big box store um, to get fish. These are all really nice kind of hand selected fish and I guess if you had to choose like oh should I get one now or should I get one maybe later someday. Get one now! Like look how amazing these are! So now I have my beta fish. This is King Midas. He has a bit of damage to his tail because the filter that my tank came from the it, it takes a little work to get it adjusted just right. And he likes to hang out by the filter, so it's a little too much flow and it damaged his tail. So anyone who's watching this and is like, why is his tail frayed? Yeah, we're working on that. It's starting to grow back. I think we've got everything situated now. I've also got a couple of plants at Aquashella from Dustin's Fish Tanks. He gave me my first two live aquatic plants. They are beautiful. They are taking over like crazy. And actually I recorded this footage a couple of weeks ago and even now the plants have just really taken off. Turns out they like fertilizer. Who knew? But those plants are doing super, super well. So if you want to check out his channel or Taylor's Simply Beta, I will have links to those in the video description. Definitely watch those. And if you are looking to get fish, make sure to educate yourself on stuff because a lot of the information that you get at like Petco or PetSmart, it's not super accurate. You really don't want a betta fish living in a little bowl with no heater or filter. They, they need it at bare minimum. They need the heater. I already can see the comments now. I'm going to have people say, but I've had a beta living in a little bowl for three years and it's fine. Yeah, well, I can lock my dog in the closet and if I throw some food and water in there for it, it can live in the, the closet for three years as well. That doesn't mean it's the life that it should have. So definitely research what kind of situation or what sort of tank and environment that is going to keep that fish as healthy and happy as possible. So my channel, it's it's Simply Beta or Simply Beta. Uh, you can come check me out. I talk about, I'm obsessed with, with beta fish, so. Actually, that's what I do. <laughs> now on to today's painting. If you were supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over. I've got the two hour version of this video available for you now. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my over 150 longer one to two hour, sometimes three hour long tutorials and a new one every single week. I work in multiple mediums. If you're interested in seeing what type of videos I have available, you can head over and check out my Patreon library. You don't have to sign up to look at that. And you also get access to a free two hour long colored pencil tutorial just for checking that out. So that gives you a better idea if Patreon is going to be a fit for you. The underpainting here 
is being done on the live stream or it's from the live stream so you can watch this in real time you're going to see my hands waving around randomly i talk with my hands and i was doing a lot of talking because it was the live stream so again you can head over i'll have a card pop up you can check that out but i'm starting here with light raw umber raw umber and unbleached titanium white for my entire background and by doing this in these basic tones, I'm going to only have to worry about my values. Are my lights light enough? My dark's dark enough? And of course, getting general details in. I'm going to come back later and clean stuff up, but I can get things generally blocked in and it's going to make the whole process so, so much easier. If you are finding that you have a hard time with color when you're painting, whether you're using acrylics or oils or really anything you can do this with, if you're having a hard time, paint it with this, these two tones, the Griselle underpainting. You can do it just with black and white. You can do it with brown tones like I'm doing here and the light raw umber, which is more of a gold. But by simplifying this, I don't have to worry about my colors. It doesn't matter if I chose yellow instead of orange or anything like that. I will worry about that once I have the hard part or what I consider the hard part, my values all blocked in. So all I need here, light's light enough, dark's dark enough, and a gen general idea of where the details are. Now, sometimes when I paint a Grisel underpainting like this, I'll spend two or three days just on the underpainting, and then I will only need one or two days for the color. Now, this design was super simple, so I was able to do the entire underpainting just with the, the first day here. And what I like to do is take my reference photo off. I'm going to do things where I do a painting in black and white first or with brown tones or however you want to do it. I will make my painting black and white or my reference photo black and white to simplify things. For those of you over on Patreon, you have access to this reference photo. So make sure to head over and check that out if you wanted to paint this guy. Now his tail is slightly out of focus, so I don't need a lot of detail there. I want to keep that pretty soft. And I'm using a tack, or a, I got this wrong on the last video. I, for some reason, said tackle and bristle. I almost did it again. It's a synthetic hog-haired liner brush for a lot of the details in here. And that was, I believe, a number four. With the tackle and bristle liner brushes, I generally will use a number two, three, or four. So for my background, I just need this to be all out of focus. So I'm blocking in the raw sienna. Or I keep saying raw sienna. It's not raw sienna. Stop saying that. It is light raw umber and then the dark raw umber, or regular raw umber for the browns. And once I get everything blocked in, I can take this mop brush. It's a Royal Soft Grip mop brush. For acrylic painting, I like to use powder brushes, makeup brushes, because they don't shed as much. These ones do shed, but they have a better, they're a little bit more stiff than a powder brush, which works better for me for oil painting. So I just went through and lightly softened everything out. And again, you can watch that all in real time over on the live stream. I know this moves super quick. Just a few more details. Again, all this paint is wet. This is all being done during that two hour live stream. So it was a pretty quick underpainting. A very fun project if you don't want to spend hours and hours and hours on a, an underpainting. Okay, we are on to day two, that dried overnight. Now I use a product called Liquin as my mixing medium. This is what I mix in with all of my paint and it makes the paint dry very quickly. So within a day, it's dry enough that I am ready to go on to my next layer. So here, we, I'm starting by adding a light yellow and putting that for the areas of the fish that are going to be, well, yellow. That's not redundant at all. And normally I like to show my palette as I paint so you can see how I'm mixing things. But in this case, I was having some computer problems and it ate some of my files. Something went terribly wrong. So now I'm coming through with this lavender. He doesn't have a lot of lavender, but I need to go ahead and make it a little bit more bold than what I want the end result to be because I'm going to be painting the white scales on top and letting bits of this lavender show through. So right now I'm intentionally going for all of these colors really quite a bit darker than what I want that end result to be. Now, as you're painting, it's normal to feel like you, you hit a layer and it just doesn't look right. You're not happy with it. It doesn't look like your reference photo. Just keep layering. And in this case, it, it will get easier the more you paint because you'll know that that's what it's supposed to look like at that layer. But here, this looks terrible, but this is where I need it to be for this layer in order to make my plan with the white paint later on work right. 
So I've got a bit of cobalt blue for the eye. This guy looks like he has eyeshadow and goth lipstick. It just cracked me up. That was what sold me on this specific fish. When I bought him, there were so many fish to choose from. So, But I loved his grumpy looking mouth, the way he looks like he's wearing lipstick and the blue eyeshadow. And this specific type of fish or type of betta, they will change color. And I didn't know this. Simply betta taught me that. They will change color or can change color throughout their life. So he may or may not stay looking like this as time goes on. And I'm starting to get in some more of the details. Now my details here on day two of painting don't need to be perfect. I just need to be pretty close. I'm going to clean everything up the third day. Right now I'm getting my main colors in where they need to go. But it's really nice because I'm not as concerned with the value. I've already got that blocked in. I already have the shapes blocked in. I have all the things that I consider to be harder. That stuff's all done. Now I all I have to really focus on are trying to get the colors pretty accurate. So it, it sort of simplifies. It takes, when you paint like this over the brown tones, it takes away some of the, the trouble that you may end up with with painting, especially in oils, of mixing color and ending up with mud. That's one of the complaints that you'll often hear from people about painting in oils is that they keep making mud. And why this happens is that you they don't let stop and let it dry where they should. With oils, they stay wet for so long, and depending on the mixing medium you, you are using, it could stay wet for two weeks. So with this, again, mine, because of being liquid, it, it dries overnight. But... If I paint, keep adding wet paint on top of wet paint on top of wet paint, at some point I just end up creating a muddy mess. I don't have definite blues or yellows or lavenders. It just all mixes together. So you have to get to a point where you realize, okay, I'm starting to create mud. That's the sign that I need to stop and let this dry overnight. Well, in my case, overnight. If you're using linseed oil or something else and, and painting really thick, you may need to let it dry longer. But in my case, I know I just need to let it dry overnight. When things start smudging more than what I want them to and it starts to get a little bit harder to control, just stop, let it dry, come back the next day. But I feel like painting in layers like this and glazing the color on top, it really does take some of that pressure of trying to not only control your values, control the shape of the fish or whatever subject you're painting, and control your color. That That's three things all at once you're trying to do. Here, I simplified it. I only had to focus on value and shape first day. Now I can focus on color. So here I'm using titanium white and I'm putting this paint on a lot thicker than I typically do. I don't have as much liquid mixed in with it so that it stays really opaque. And I want to make sure some of the lavender and yellows show through in between so that I get the look of scales. And I have to keep reloading that brush and getting more of the thicker white paint on it. Otherwise, I just start blending in with the colors that are already there. This is noticeably thicker than, than the other paint colors. And at that bottom, I mixed some of the purple, a little bit of raw sienna, and then the yellow in for that shadow on the underside of his face. I'll come back through with some more purples and lavenders later. And for his fin, a lot of the shading is going to be done with purples and violets and oranges. Watch when you're painting yellows. Don't jump to think or jump straight to black. It's really easy to think, okay, shadow, black. Obviously, black would be the choice. Try to avoid that whenever you can. In this case, I don't want to use black at all for the shadows, especially with the yellow. I'm just going to come up with a weird green. So instead, I'm using some burnt sienna. I've got some different shades of orange, a couple of different shades of yellow, some violet colors. I'm using those tones to get my shadows and avoiding any black. I also want to be careful with any blue that I've used because there is a little bit of indigo blue that I've used on the body and the back end, the, especially the back end of the body. But I don't want to mix that too much into the, the yellow or I'm going to end up with green. So I've got to be careful there. And again, as we move out away from his face, that's all going to become more and more out of focus. So not a lot of detail here. I think I do want to paint another one eventually where he is more in detail. Here, I used my macro lens to take the reference photo and really focused on his face because when I got him, his fins, he was spending way too much time with the filter and it took me a while to really get that filter adjusted so that it wouldn't damage his fins. He, he kept 
yeah, they were just getting damaged. So now they're starting to grow back. But at the time that I took this photo, I really didn't want to focus on the damaged fins. So I went ahead and just really zoomed in on his face and let the ta his tail just blur out. But once those fins all come back, I will get another photo where I do some more detail on the fins as well so that we can use that as a separate lesson. But this way is way easier for sure because there isn't a lot of detail in those fins. You just want to keep it soft and blurred. Now, you can have high contrast. Don't, don't misunderstand thinking blurry or out of focus means all the colors need to be about the same. I can have super darks and super lights next to each other, but I want a soft transition between from one to the next. I don't want really harsh lines in between those. So here, as I put in the, the paint, I'm going to need to come back through with my mop brush and soften that out. Right now, it's definitely too harsh, but this paint is all still wet, so it's not a problem to blend it out. Now, this is starting to get to a point where I've got so much paint there, I've got to be careful because I can start creating a bit of mud. I've got quite a bit of wet paint there. I'm just lightly going over it. Now, here's the thing you want to watch with oil paint. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is that they overblend. They do what I just did there. They make a couple of brush strokes to blend it out and think, wow, this looks good. So if two or three brush strokes looks good, I must need 20. And they end up mixing all of the color together and they just, that's that muddy mess we were talking about. So don't overblend. A couple of brush strokes to blend out your brush stroke, to, you know, a couple of brush strokes with a mop brush to blend out your other brush strokes are really all you need. The point of a mop brush is not to mix the color together. It's just to soften the, the initial brush strokes. So here I've got this gold color and then that really bright lemon yellow. And of course, some lavender. Now in his case, the lavender isn't really just for adding shadows. He actually does have a lavender tint on the tip of his tail. The deeper magenta, that color I'm using there, that is what I'm using more for shadows. The lavender is not really either a, a highlight or a shadow. It's just the color of his fins. Now this is a little bit too blurry. I'm gonna come back through and define that a bit more later on. And this is getting to that stage again where I've gotta be careful because I am going to start creating a bit of a muddy mess where the colors are blending too much. I do have so much wet paint on the canvas at this point. And here's another tip. As you're blending and you're mixing liquid to thin out your, your colors, each additional layer, while it's still wet, you're going to use less and less liquid. If I use the same amount of liquid, I put in the first base layer of those yellows with the, the paint and it's still wet and I use the same amount of liquid for the next layer, that second layer, it's going to start almost slipping around. It's too wet. So each additional layer, while the paint is still wet on that same day of painting, I'm going to be using less and less of my mixing medium because there's already mixing medium on the canvas. Now, the exception to that would be if your paint starts to really dry, if you've been painting for so many hours that it's starting to get a little bit tacky and it's starting to dry, then you're going to, to make up for that by going ahead and adding a bit more liquid again. But you want to balance that out. So here with the green, I'm using different, light, different colors of lemon yellow mixed with a light, light green. I've got some sap green in there. Chromium of oxide is a color I've got in there. I think there's a one called tree green or something like that. It doesn't really matter. Just grab a bunch of different colors of green and get some variation. And I am going to add a bunch of indigo for this dark, dark corner on the bottom right-hand side. And there's that indigo. It looks like black. It's not here. I'm just using indigo. And I can come through with additional black to darken it up, but if I can get some of that with the indigo first, that's going to look a little bit better. It'll give me a, quite a bit more depth than jumping straight to black. 
Now, I'm a fan of using black paint. You'll often hear people tell you never to use it because it is so flat. Yeah, it can be flat. I mix other colors with it, so it's not flat. I like black paint, but you don't always need to jump straight to black. It's not always the best answer. And see how I'm blending the background just a bit in with this tail there, just to soften that out. Again, because this portion is so out of focus. Just hyping up my contrast a bit more on the tail. There is some olive green, that's that sort of brownish green color. And that blends into the sap green, which is going to be a brighter green. I'm still blending wet into wet, but those initial layers on the tail here had started to dry enough that they were getting a little bit tacky, which means the paint is sticking again. I had to let it set for a bit before I was able to continue on because it was getting to that slippery stage I was talking about earlier where there was just too much paint on there. Depending on the mixing medium you're using, it may or may not start to get tacky the same day within that time, your painting period there. You may need to wait a day or two for it to hit that stage of, of being tacky if you're using linseed or I, yeah, linseed oil, walnut oil, any of those other ones. I've had paintings that I did with linseed oil where I had painted everything so thick it took, gosh, one of them two months later that paint didn't, I had just started with oils. I painted it way too thick, but I mean two months to dry. That's not normal, but it really does make a difference what mixing medium you're using. A few more details here, better defining a little bit more with that lavender. And the lavender color I'm using, it is just indigo and my magenta mixed together. I don't actually have a color called lavender. I'm sure they make it. I don't own one. If you find that you have have trouble mixing color, one of the best things you can do for yourself is start working on a more limited color palette. Use less colors. Don't try to go buy every color in the world. It makes it more confusing. Limit yourself to just a neutral orange, or I'm sorry, not orange, I wouldn't do orange, a neutral yellow, red, blue. You may wanna go with a dioxazine purple or a magenta color, those do, it is a little bit easier to go ahead and buy the, that color. I'm gonna brown, a green, just kind of one of each of the colors. That is going to make Make it way easier for you to learn to mix from those basic colors and of course black and white than to have 50 colors to choose from. It's one of the problems that we see a lot with colored pencil artists because we have a set, one set may have 120, 150 colors. It's, you look at it and it can be overwhelming. Limit your color choices. Just pull out the basic colors that you need and work from there. And in using less colors, you're going to learn to blend or not blend, mix. It, that's how you're going to learn which color to choose and what happens when you mix different colors together. But you have to actually do it. Jump in and do it. You can see now I'm better defining things. I'm, I'm working on the contrast a bit more here, especially in the yellows. I've got some very, a lot more variation with the yellows, especially on his head there. One of the things that you want to watch in your paintings, which area needs to have a harsh line versus which area needs to have a soft line. One of the problems that a lot of people or a lot of newer artists have when they start, they make every single line harsh and then don't understand why it doesn't look realistic. Some of your lines do need to be softened out. Pay attention to that on your reference photo. So here, my harsher lines are going to be around his head where it's very in focus and look where it blends out. It fades out when I get out into his tail. Everything's very soft. One of my biggest mistakes when I first started painting, for years, I insisted on outlining everything with a super thin line of black. Now, good news is, I learned how to draw really, really thin lines with a liner brush, so it was good practice, but it also looked very cartoony. So I had to learn not to outline everything. Like, I mean, every, all of my edges were so harsh that everything was literally outlined. That doesn't, that, that's not a good idea. Don't do that. 
And watch your contrast. So in this case, let's say, is his face blending in too much with the yellow of his tail? Then maybe I need to darken the yellow of his tail a little bit more, even if that's not what's on his reference photo. As an artist, I, you know, I'm being an artist. I'm not being a photographer there. I can go through and just darken that up, which will push the white of his face forward. But do that instead of going through and outlining things, at least when you're working towards realism. More of that lavender on the tip of his tail there. But see how the white, it looks like scales now. The, that thick white paint over those darker colors. And here's where I was talking about that. His head was blending a little bit too much to the tail. Just take a darker color. And I just smudge that out. And I, when I say darker color, I don't mean just outline it. Darken that edge. And when I added that darker edge, I added it along the top of his head and I pulled it away from his face. I added that shadow out towards his fin. So that left that crisp line where the top or the edge of his face was there. There is my finished painting of my betta fish. Again, one thing I do want to just remind you of, I know I said it earlier, but it's such a big deal. If you are trying oil painting and you're struggling and you're having a hard time, you're creating mud, colors are blending together too much, that's how you know, stop let it dry and come back to it the next day. That's just a huge indication that it is time to let that layer dry. If you have been watching my live streams lately, you've heard me talk about my escape artist snail who I found in my kitchen sink, on the kitchen floor, on the kitchen counter. I can't even count how many times now. This is him. This is Stan Hill. He likes to go exploring. If you have not already, make sure to hit subscribe so you can keep up to date with all of my new videos and live streams. YouTube does not notify anyone most of the time now when a new video goes up, so you may also want to subscribe to my email newsletter. That's free. I send out tips once a week for art motivation and just general art tips and let you know whatever videos went up that you might have missed.